Welcome, everybody, to another wonderful episode of You're in Class, But I'm Not. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to find the remaining five trig functions for theta. What I'd like you to do is place number nine in your journal. Write it exactly as it appears. Make sure you draw in your x-axis and your y-axis and get a clear picture of the problem. And we'll start it here in just a few short seconds. So please pause the video while everybody gets number nine in their journal. Alrighty. Apparently everybody has number nine in your journal. Well, what we're going to look right now is right here at number nine. It says the cosine of theta equals negative 12 over thir 13, and we are finishing in quadrant number three. So if we were to draw, all right, an angle that has an, an initial side here, all right, that would be where the initial side is. I'm going to go ahead and draw one right now for the initial side. Let's see here. Change the color. See here, I'm going to draw, move that right here. There's the initial side. Make my cool little arrow like that. Now, the terminal side, remember this is that right there, that's the initial. It's always good to spell things correctly, especially on videos. They might hold it against you. Initial side, all right? So our terminal side, let's see here. I'm going to try to get it like this, negative 12. All right, let's see here. Something like that. All right. So there's our terminal side, and we are in quadrant three. Now remember, the cosine of theta is equal to your x value over your r value. So if, our, if they've given us a negative 12 over 13, okay, they've actually given us two out of our three values. Now, your radius, listen closely. Your radius is never going to be negative. So I know my radius actually is the 13 and my negative 12 is my x value. So what I'd like you to do in your journal is label your x is equal to negative 12. Your r is equal to a positive 13, which means you have to solve for your y value. Now, just in case you forgot this particular formula, I'm going to write it again. Your x coordinate squared plus your y coordinate squared is always equal to your r, your radius or your r, not r coordinate, radius squared. So, remember, your r value is always going to be Positive, that's what I'm trying to write here. Positive. Got it in there. So let's see, see what we do. We're going to put a negative 12. We're going to square it. We're going to put a y. We're going to square it. We're going to put our radius. We're going to square it. Okay? And you get 144 plus y squared equals 169. Now, if you happen to take away 144 from both sides, so I'm going to do that. Take away 144, and take away 144. You get y squared equals 25, and y is equal to a positive 5. But wait one second here. If my point right here, all right, let's say that's a point, and my circle. I'm not going to draw a circle because uh, I don't think I can do a very good job of drawing a circle with this particular application. All right, go ahead, get all the laughing out. I know that's a horrible circle, all right, but let's pretend it was a good circle. 
understand that this point right here is actually a negative x value and it's a negative y value because you are in quadrant number three. Very important that you understand that you're in quadrant three. Okay, so our y value, even though it says y equals five, our y value, because we're in quadrant three, it's going to be a negative five. Now, what we're going to do right now, knowing that, hey, this is where we finished, right here, in case you're wondering. We finished right here. Remember, this is the initial side. This was our terminal side. We are trying to find, we have our y coordinate now. It's a negative 5. We have our x coordinate. It's a negative 12. We know our radius right here. We know our radius is equal to a 13. All right? So I'm going to make my triangle here doing the best I can to make my triangle. It goes over negative 12 units and down 5 units. So our ordered pair is negative 12, negative 5. Now what we're going to do is we are going to find the 5 remaining trig ratios. So remember, these right here. These are going to help us next. I'm going to have a clear screen in just a few short seconds. All right, everybody. What we've done here, or what I've done, hopefully you can see that I've, there's our ordered pair that we're working with, negative 12, negative 5. We have a radius of 13. X is negative 12, Y is negative 5. We are in quadrant number 3. Very important you understand that. So you have a negative X and a negative Y value. Now what we're going to do is we're going to find all 6, but we were already given 1. What was the 1 that we were given? Hmm, I think it was cosine, I believe. All right, our cosine is a negative 12 over 13. Because remember, that was our x value over our r value. Now, the cool thing is, is if you have cosine, automatically you have secant. Because you know secant is simply the reciprocal of cosine. So that's right, it's going to be a negative 13 over 12, and that's going to be your final answer that you're going to put for number 9 on your paper. Nice and neat, so I can read it. Now, the sine of theta, let's think about that. That's going to be my y value over my r value. Looks like that's going to be a negative 5 over 13. Voila! There it is. Now, hello. Hi. That's my wife. Now, how do I find the cosecant? It's always going to be the reciprocal of your sine. Well, what's the reciprocal of this? It's going to be the radius over your y value, which is simply a negative 13 over 5. And you're done. The tangent is simple, because it's the y value over the x value, which simply equals, in this particular case here, y value, oh, negative 5. All right, x value... Oh, negative 12. So it looks like that one, pay no attention to the hair dryer in the background, is 5 over 12. All right. And the cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent, which is your x value over your y value, which would simply be 12 over 5. And once again, oh my goodness, you have every single one that you need. Now, what I need you to do right now is carefully, carefully place all of these answers directly on your page. And you will have a problem done with 100% accuracy. All right, all you math fanatics, we're going to look at number 10 right now, which tells us some information. They told us that we have the cosecant of theta. And the cosecant of theta is equal to a 2. And right now, we are in quadrant 2, which means we're going to be over here in this general vicinity. All right? Hmm. Let's think about this. All right. Let's think about what we know. We know the cosecant of theta equals, let's see, our radius over our y value. Hmm. Wait a second. 
my radius is going to be 2, and my y value is going to be 1. And notice how it's positive. Now I already know. I don't know my x value. We've got to find that. Okay? We know our y value. We know our y value is a positive 1. We always know our radius is going to be a positive number. That's a 2. So where are we going to be here? We have a radius of y of 1 radius of 2. So I'm guessing, okay, let me make our little graph here. Try to do it as accurate as I possibly can. We have our initial side but right there. You can kind of see it. Okay, let me do a better initial side. Dum, 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 dum. See here. So let's, there's our initial side. There we go. And our terminal side, let's see here. Y value is just a 1. Okay, so I'm thinking that it's going to be something like this. Something like that. All right? So I'll explain why I think that this right here, from there to there, that actually is theta. Now, that's not a perfect graph, but I want you to understand that right here, this distance, that's just a, that's just a 1, and my radius is a 2, okay? So here's, that's the 1, that's the 2, this is going to be my negative x value that I have to find, okay? So let's use the Pythagorean theorem. And we can find out what our x value is. Okay? So I'm going to move some things real quick. I don't want to move that. Now we'll just move to a new page. All right, here we go. We have our new page here. Okay? Let's review what we had. We had the cosecant of theta was 2, and we know the cosecant of any angle is going to be the r value over the y value. So we figured that out, that that was going to be actually 2 over 1. Okay? So here's our picture. Here is theta from here to here. That's going to be our angle, all right, theta. And we also understand that if we draw this straight down right here, this point right here is going to be a negative x value and a y value, okay? This right here will be the negative x. This distance is going to be our y. And this right here is our r. And we already know our y value and our r value. Okay, remember, our y is 1. So we know this distance right here is a 1. And we know our radius is equal to a 2. So if we use the formula, x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Okay? So let's say you didn't automatically recognize that this was a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. Let's say you didn't automatically recognize it. That's okay. You can still use x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So here we go. x squared plus 1 squared equals r squared. Let's see what we get. We get x squared plus 1 equals 4. If you subtract 1 from each side, minus 1 minus 1. You get x squared equals 3, and voila! x is equal to the square root of 3. But however, what I need you to understand, we have, x is going to be a negative x value. So even though in the formula we get x equals the square root of 3, we need to know we are dealing with quadrant number 2. So our x value is actually going to be a negative radical 3. Now, remember I said we had a 30, 60, 90. And if you're wondering, how did I know we had a 30, 60, 90? That's because I saw that my radius was 2, and one of my sides right here, my y value, was a 1. So I knew I was going to finish up with a radical 3. So what I want you to do right now is make sure you have this right there on your paper somewhere because we're going to use those to find every single trig ratio and get problem number 10 100% complete then you are going to be responsible for the last four problems i know 
to ridiculous amount of work. <sighs> I'm such a horrible teacher. Four problems to do all by yourself. All right, everybody, we are in the final leg of the problem. But in order to do this problem, we have to know our formulas. So hopefully, by now, you know that the sine of theta is equal to the y value over the r value, which is your radius. So you have to ask yourself, self, what is my y value? And hopefully you said your y value was? One. That's right, it's one. And your radius is? Two. That's right. So your final answer for the sine of theta is one over two. And voila, you are done. Now the cosine of theta is your x value over your r value. Hmm, I wonder what my x value is. <gasps> a negative radical 3. And what's my r value? 2. 2. By the way, if you're wondering who is that incredibly intelligent voice in the background, it's not me, that's my son, Luke. And my final answer is negative radical 3 over 2. Then I look at my tangent. And my tangent of theta is my y value over my x value. If only I knew my y value. It would be 1. That's right. If only I knew my x value. Negative radical 3. Negative radical 3. Uh-oh, we've got problems here, folks. We're not allowed to have this pesky, irrational number in the denominator. That's not okay. So we have to rationalize it. But we've rationalized so many of these that hopefully you know the answer is negative radical 3 over 3. Now, my son has not done these, so it's okay. He's only in the seventh grade, so he hasn't learned how to rationalize the denominator. But you are not in the seventh grade, so you need to know how to rationalize the de denominator. If you don't know how to rationalize the denominator, ask Alex or Kaylee or pretty much a lot of people in the class, so you probably everybody should know how to do this, all right? So, here we go. Whew. Cosecant of theta. By the way, if you're wondering where we are, we're right here. And yes, that is a lightsaber. Yeah, pretty cool, huh? All right. That's my son giggling. Now, the cosecant of theta is the reciprocal of sine, which is r over what? Wait a second. That's what they gave us at the beginning. It's 2 over 1, which simply just simplifies to a 2. Well, that wasn't hard because that's what they gave us at the beginning. Now, the secant, this is where it gets tricky. Secant of theta. So it would be r over x? Yes, it's r over x, but this is where it gets kind of mm. uh, bummer. I have a 2 over a negative radical 3, but are and we allowed... It's irrational. Yeah, it's irrational, so we have to simplify it. So, by the way, I'm going to move this answer down just a little bit, okay? Which means I'm going to have to move my cotangent down, too. Let me see if I can move it. Hmm. Maybe I can move it. Oh, I can move it. Sweet. I'm going to move it over. All right, here we go. So if I have, let's see here, can I erase this now? Oh, I can't erase it because I moved it, bummer. So if I have two over a negative radical three, what do I have to do to simplify that? I have to multiply it by a radical three over a radical three, and you get negative two radical three over three, and that's your final answer for your secant of theta. Now, finally, the last but not least is the cotangent of theta, so which is your... So x over y? Yeah, that x is over y. Negative radical 3 over 1? Yep, negative radical 3 over 1, which just simplifies to simply a negative radical 3. Because any number divided by 1 is itself. It's like Luke divided by 1 is Luke. Mr. DeMood divided by 1 is Mr. DeMood. Dr. Evil divided by 1 is Dr. Or evil. And uh, crunk divided by one is just crunk. So, in finalization or summary or conclusion, that's how you find all six trigonometric ratios. It's your responsibility to finish up this awesome assignment all on your own. Good luck. If you need to rewind this and watch something again, feel free. Otherwise, get to work, and I'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye.